Welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Thousand One Games. I'm your host, Gaming J, and today we're hopping into the PS2 classic Ratchet and Clank. And for one of the first times ever, I think, in fact, the first time ever in this series, I'm actually playing this on a PS2 emulator. I have fought and fought and fought against using a PS2 emulator on this channel. I mean, if you guys watch the channel, you know, for like older, like NES games and stuff, I like to use emulators because it's just, it's so much easier to record and the pictures are so much sharper rather than, you know, trying to go through like an RGB connection on an old NES. But, um, you know, I kind of drew the line um, after the PS1, basically, um, and everything since then. I mean, I have all I have all the physical systems, you know, going back PS, PS1, Sega Genesis, NES, Super Nintendo, all the way back. But then I also have like PS2, Xbox, Xbox 360, of course, all those. Um, and pretty much everything after the PS1, I... Uh, was dead set on playing on legit hardware, but my PS2 has been acting up. I was trying to record an episode of Ratchet and Clan, uh, Ratchet and Clanch, and uh, I got uh, you know like uh, just five minutes in, and it crashed. And I don't know, my PS2 might be might be on the way out. And I had heard that PS2 emulators had come a long way. Um, I mean, it's been seven years since we started this journey, this Thousand and One quest, and uh, in that time, technology has significantly improved. So I decided to take another look at PS2 emulators. It looked like they would play this game perfectly, so today is a test run to see if uh, there's a future here for us in PS2 emulators. And uh, frankly, we'll talk a little bit more about emulation because we are playing this on an emulator today. So we'll talk a little bit more about that in the video. But let's focus on Ratchet and Clank for right now. Ratchet and Clank, as you can see here, is a third person uh, sort of like gadget shooter, I guess. I don't know what the proper genre you would call it. It's an adventure game for sure. Um, it looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm excited to give this one a shot. And uh, without further ado, let's just go ahead and hop in and uh, see what we got going on. All right, new game. Uh, go ahead and format that puppy. All right, so you can see our little uh, uh, emulator notification there. Memory card is being written. Um, I think I will turn that off in future because, you know, even when I do play games on emulators, I like to get the full authentic experience. I mean, I'm using a legit PS2 controller that's plugged into my, plugged into a USB adapter that goes into my computer. So, uh, yeah, even though emulator, you know, we're going to try and keep this as authentic as we can. Anyway, uh, Kaisel Plateau, Planet Velden. Uh, here we go. The game actually looks very nice, I will say. Uh, it's one of the nice things about doing animated characters is that I feel like they age uh, better than trying to do photorealistic characters. Like if this was a photorealistic character on PS2, it would probably look a little dated, but you know, it's supposed to be stylistic, so it actually like looks pretty good. Uh, meanwhile, in a factory on a nearby planet, they are <laughs> just dumping robots into a hole, as you do when you produce robots. No, this is the anti ro Oh, there's a defective robot. Oh, he's so tiny. Don't throw him out. He's, he reminds me of, um, what was that 80s movie? A Battery's Not Included, where there were like tiny little, I mean, there they were little UFO robots, but they were tiny little robots that lived in an apartment complex. Um, if you've never seen that movie, it's kind of weird to go back and rewatch. There's also like, uh... A Latino mafia dude who's trying to like bully the tenants out of the building so that it can be demolished and there's some old lady who thinks she's his son and it's weird it's a weird I mean lots of 80s movies were weird when you go back and rewatch them but it was a pretty good movie I think as I recall the I mean the little uh, robots and stuff were cool so kudos to insomniac for throwing robots into this game uh, cute little robot never heard anything in fact, it typically helps sales in movies, games, everything, I think. But, um, while, so basically, Ratchet and Clank are a duo that team up together, and um, I'm about to meet Ratchet. I am Clank. No, wait. Other way around. That's Clank. I'm, I don't know, guys. I don't know who's who. We'll just call them 
Rabbit and Robot. So I am Rabbit and I have to meet Robot. And the first thing I want to do is reverse my vertical controls because these are bad. So here is, so I did look up before we started to play if there were any glitches in the emulator for this. Here's one. This options menu is not supposed to have a gray background. It's supposed to legit have, um, you're supposed to be able to see the game behind it. As far as I can tell, this is like the only glitch in the whole thing. This game runs at like 99% efficiency. So we're just gonna live with the uh, the minor glitch, but uh, anyway, um, just nice. camera controls up and down is reverse. There. And here's one other thing I hate about old PS2 games: X is select and O should be cancel. Why the hell is <laughs> why the hell's triangle exit? That's so it just it, it's just weird. It's like when you play an NES game and B is jump and A is do something. It's like no A is the jump button. Have you guys never played a game before? Um, all right, there's little uh, dinosaurs here. They're getting in my way. This kind of feels like uh, Mario 64. If Mario, you know, got like uh, a crowbar and just started going nuts on the Koopas. Because it, it, it is very much, you know, like Mario 64 obviously pioneered these like uh, 3D platformer games. And so, um, Every time we play one, it's like you see the influence of Mario 64. But Mario did not have like a, a, a sledgehammer to like bust the knees of the Koopas and the Goombas that were in the way. Whereas uh, old Ratchet, he must be Ratchet because he's got, he's literally got a Ratchet. Old Ratchet here does. But uh, anyway, so off, off we go to find Clank. Nice little introduction to the control so far. Ooh, they're leading us mm -hmm. with uh, a pile of uh, a pile of uh, nuts and bolts. Now, I think we did play Ratchet and Clank Nuts and Bolts, which was the sequel to this game. My memory is a, is a blur these days. Seven years of playing this video game challenge has robbed me of my ability to differentiate separate gaming sessions. It's all just blurred together. But I'm pretty sure we did play... Uh, Includes a new comet strike. Press R1 to crouch, and then... Oh, look at that! That is pretty cool. Ooh, I like that move. Um, anyways, the game is sort of getting going here. Uh... Let Gadgetron's patented nanotech system rebuild your body from the inside out. Are we not injured? Is that why we don't need it? Let's try and get injured. I think I haven't been hurt yet. Hit me! Ow! I am injured. Oh, there we go. All right. So it's not health, which is a little weird, but it's nanotech. You know, in old video games when uh, you could eat like a turkey, like a Christmas turkey dinner, and that would heal you. You know, like some, some video games you use like health packs to heal, which makes a lot of sense. Other video games is like food. It's like, I don't know, a nice big ham dinner. That'll... That'll heal what ails ya. I don't know how the developers thought of that or why anyone thought a big, you know, just <laughs> just eating a turkey ham would, uh, or a turkey dinner would fix you. But whatever, it's it's charming and I enjoy it. Um, but in those video games where eating a turkey or eating a ham or, or whatever heals you, is your health bar actually health or is it actually a hunger meter? Maybe you just have a very hungry dude and every time he gets hit, he's like, oh man, that hurt a little bit, but more than anything, it made me realize I'm very hungry. And then when your hunger meter gets to zero, he's like, no, I can't go on. I'm too hungry. Um, or maybe I'm just overthinking it. Um, so as I've been trying to say, I keep getting distracted here. Uh, a little bit of background for this game. So this game actually is using some shared technology with Naughty Dog. Um, the good old folks behind Uncharted and Crash Bandicoot and, and stuff like that. Um, and also, I guess so, uh, Naughty Dog made a game called Jack and Daxter, which I think we have also played on this channel, and... Oh god, ow. Um, I just, I realized as I was looking up for this game, I don't 100% know if I recognize, always realize the difference between Jack and Daxter or Ratchet and Clank. I think we might have played a Jack and Daxter game on this channel, and I might have thought I was playing a Ratchet and Clank game. 
I don't know why I'm confusing them in my head. I mean, they're very similar games. They're both PlayStation games. You're a main character and you have a little buddy who sits on your shoulder. So it's like very similar like that. I think they are fairly different games, but frankly, um, oh, you can jump and then attack. Boom. Oh, cool. I like how they're just giving us all the, uh, all the moves here. Die, robot. Die, robot. One shot, you guys. Ow. You zap me, robot. And we can double jump, right? Can we? Oh, yeah, you can. You can totally double jump. Um, I'm making up bombs, and I haven't been paying attention to all the, uh, all the controls. Oh, there we go. Circle lets me, uh, use my gadget. Okay. I can take it off. Oops, I'm just lobbing bombs. Oops, don't mind me. Yeah, we gotta start using some of these bombs. Um, yeah, so I don't know if I re fully recognize that there even was a difference between Ratchet and Clank and Jack and Daxter. I mean, now that I, I think about it, I'm like, oh yeah, those are two totally different franchises, but they've always been confused in my head. So it's kind of funny how the engine that runs this was sort of shared between Naughty Dog and Insomniac. Insomniac, the guys who made this, did Spyro the Dragon, so totally different studio than, uh, um, oh God, Naughty Dog literally just said their name and I forgot. Um, but even though it was shared technology, a lot of people think that this game just uses the Jack and Daxter engine, but Insomniac has gone on the record as saying like, no, no, that's not the case. We shared technology. They shared their engine. We made lots of improvements and changes. And so it's like similar technology, but different. Just like Jack and Daxter and Ratchet and Clank are similar, uh, but different. Uh, we should probably pay attention to this story, though. Well, he's on the radio every week. Other than that, no. Hey, what's with all this save the solar system stuff, anyway? Hello, citizens of... My race, the Blog, have a small problem. Our planet has become so polluted, overpopulated, and poisonous that we are no longer able to dwell here. But I, Chairman Dreck, have a solution. We are constructing a pristine new world using the choicest planetary components available. So, what does this mean to you, you might ask? Using highly sophisticated technology, which you couldn't possibly understand, we will be extracting a large portion of your planet and adding it to our new one. <laughs> Fortunately, this change in mass will cause your planet to spin out of control and drift into the sun where it will explode into a flaming ball of gas. But, of course, sacrifices must be made. <laughs> Thank you for your cooperation. And if you don't like it, you can take your whiny, sniveling, snot-nosed populations, form a line behind me, and kiss my... We're still on? Well, turn it off, you idiot! <laughs> Why would they leave that in? The people on those planets are hosed. Well, good luck getting Captain Quark to help you. Actually, you could help me. If you could use your ship to take me to the coordinates contained in this infobot, I might be able to gather further information there. Even if I wanted to, I can't. I'm missing a crucial component of the ship. The robotic ignition system. How did you know that? I, sir, happen to be equipped with the latest in robotic ignition systems. My programming allows me to start any ship I choose. So, I agree to take you to this wherever it is, and you get my ship started for me? That is what I'm proposing. Deal. You know, I wonder if back in like 1985 when they made Super Mario Brothers 1, was it 85 or 84? Would they have included like this long complicated cutscenes to explain things? Like there's something very sleek about retro games where it's like there is a story like Mario's trying to save Princess from Koopa and stuff, but they don't need cutscenes to tell that story. And I've, I've said this many times over the years, but like as a gamer, like, even when I play privately, I often just skip cutscenes because I just don't care. Like, I, I'm not playing a game to watch a movie. I want to play a game. And maybe it's because I'm old and I grew up with retro games that didn't have cutscenes. But sometimes I will watch cutscenes. Occasionally. Uh, if a game really, you know, is very epic or whatever. But it kind of feels like a lot of times... I don't know, like, games have merged with movies in a weird way, and, like, I don't always know if it's necessary, but, I mean, I guess 
you know, this game was a huge hit. I guess people like it. I don't know. I might just be sort of the odd one out here, but um, I always think this, you know, like when, when I just sit, when I'm doing a let's play and I'm sitting here just watching cutscenes, not talking to you guys, not playing, uh, just kind of makes me wonder. Anyway, let's just, uh, can we just skip these cutscenes? Yes, we can. All right. I mean, at least that gives you the option to skip the cutscenes. So if you don't care, you can just skip it. But I always feel a little obligated to watch at least a few of the basic beginning ones so we kind of know what's happening. Um, but I, I don't know. I don't know how much cutscenes add for me. Like, if they had literally just said, like, you know, if they had summarized it really quickly, like, like this this entire move to the other planet could be could have been handled in, like, a 20-second cutscene rather than, like, this is going on for, like, a couple minutes. I don't know. I might just be old and crotchety, guys. Don't take it personally if you love this game. Um, okay. The other thing I was going to say is that bad guy's plot seems overly complicated. So your planet is dying. So your solution is to take pieces of several planets, destroying all of them in the process to create one new planet. Why not just take one of those existing planets? I think that's the simpler solution. Rather than wiping out like five different planetary populations, just go ahead and genocide one of them. And then, uh, you know, uh, take that planet. I don't know. Um, ooh, this guy has stuff to sell me. Oh, that's a nice one. Okay, we want to save up 2,500 shablamos. Oh my god, if I fall off here, will I die? I'm very tempted to jump off that platform. Oh god, no, wait. Okay, all right, well, oh, down we go. Oh, I see, but you can go on this to go all the way back up. Whoa. That's pretty cool, man. Like, look at this whole, I love that they give you the overview. So it's like, this is the world you're gonna explore. Like such a, such a preview of like where we're gonna go in this level. I actually really love that. That's really cool. I wonder, can can you go to every single spot that I can see here? That's, that'd be really cool, be really cool. That was one of the big lies in Destiny, guys. Like, I don't know if you guys ever played Destiny. I, I was a Destiny player back in the day. Um, and I, I got really sucked into it for a while there. Um, but I remember when the game was coming out, they showed some screenshots and they showed, whoa, oh, oh, I see. So we can't fall, okay. Um, here, let me just look at this majestic view for a second. There was early gameplay footage of Destiny and it showed like a like a huge countryside like this and they were like the beautiful thing is you can pick a point in the horizon and you can run to it and there's something there. And I was like, "Whoa, that's really cool. Like imagine a game where like you could literally go everywhere you could see." And then Destiny came out and that 100% wasn't how it worked. It was bounded in like any other game and I was like, "Okay, that's a bit of a crock." So yeah. Um Destiny itself had like a tortured history of development it uh, went through a total redesign at one point and the plot like was completely reversed and changed and frankly it showed like uh, it was very obvious that the plot had been reworked and none of the characters made sense and the plot was garbage and like you know th and this is from someone who liked destiny I, I i really enjoyed the gameplay of it the, the shooting and all that was really tight the weapons were pretty sweet um, but it was one of the grindiest games I have ever been, I have ever gotten into. You had to work so hard for things. Um, like I, I would literally grind for weeks and weeks to try and get just like, uh, you know, uh, one, uh, one weapon. Um, and then years later, um, like more recently, I got into Remnant from the Ashes, which is not trying to be a Destiny clone, but it's... It's got a lot of similarities in that, uh, you know, you kind of explore around these different environments for like different weapons and stuff. And it's a, a looter shooter, uh, but it has two key differences. One is, is it has semi randomly generated dungeons, which Destiny never really had. So it's like in Destiny, once you knew a dungeon, you knew it by heart and they would have different battles in the same dungeons, but it's like the, the dungeons never change. So it was a little bit of a letdown than that, you know, like at least Diablo had procedurally generated dungeons. Um, and then the other thing that was nice about Remnant is that, yeah, you, uh, you know, yeah, it was a looter shooter, but like in Remnant, if there was like an item piece that you really, really wanted, 
there were ways to get it and you could probably spend an evening at most and be able to get it. And sometimes you get it far faster than that. So it's like, barring a few exceptions, um, even though it was a looter shooter, it was far kinder to you, far less of a grind than Destiny. Destiny's grind just felt abusive. But uh, anyway. Um, aren't you loving my Ratchet and Clank commentary? What you guys tuned in for, right? Hearing about Destiny? <laughs> Jump. What is the point of this? Oh, we can get over there. I feel like the game was slowing down for a little bit there. I don't know if you guys noticed that as well. Um, it seems to have picked back up again, but that might be a consequence of the emulator. I think if today goes well, I'm going to look at the emulator settings and stuff, and we might play some more future uh, PS2 games on emulator. Just because, again, it's like the convenience factor. You know, one of, I've been doing this 1001 quest for like seven years now. Whoa, God. And one of the things, one of the honest challenges of playing 1001 games, besides getting the games, getting the systems, uh, setting up a recording setting, honestly, sadly, motivation, guys. It, it, it Sometimes, like, I sit down, I wake up Saturday morning, I'm like, I should really play a game, make a video, and I'm just like, ugh. I just, you know, I have to go downstairs, pick a game, you know, find the disc, plug it in, make sure the PS2, like, my recording setup is pretty complicated. If I switch from anything but the computer to, like, another console or something, it's like I have a chart of like what buttons I have to click and what I have to unplug and plug back in. So it's like, honestly, it's a hassle to record from the PS2. Um, and when, if I could simply few, through a few clicks on my computer, bring up a PS2 game and be playing within like 30 seconds, I feel like that would massively help my motivation. And I'm not saying like my motivation is waning and you know, the... You know, Anything's gonna happen, like I'm gonna stop making videos. But I'm just saying like, it, it is hard to keep going sometimes. Um, it is like a long, a huge challenge that I've undertaken here. And some days it would be nice to have a shortcut. Um, and so being able to emulate PS2 games too, you know, might uh, might make me play, well, might make me wanna play more PS2 games. Oh my God. God, I didn't fall, okay, we gotta be very careful here. Um, yeah. And it's funny because it's the same for NES, you know, like I have a huge collection of NES games. I almost never play the physical games anymore because it's just so much easier to play them on emulators. So it's like I'm not necessarily playing them on emulators because I don't have the games. I'm playing them on emulators because like it takes two seconds to uh, click on a game and then you have it, you know. Um, I guess I can just fall down here. I don't know why I'm going down this part all gingerly. But, uh, wait. Hey, wait, that's... That's where I just was. Wait. Okay, hold on. I wasn't paying attention to anything that guy said. I was too busy blathering on to you guys about emulators and motivation stuff. But, um, as far as emulators do go, I have to say, this game seems to be emulating perfectly. I'm very impressed with the state of PS2 emulation. Um, it's funny, I don't have the same mental block about the PS2 uh about physical ps2 games as physical xbox games i feel like my original xbox is still like humming along well and works well and it's a lot easier to record off of for some it's like the ps2 is like one of the more difficult systems to sort of get working um like of all my systems like i'm trying to think like xbox 360 ps3 oh my god those all are very easy it's only the ps2 that gives me problems and funnily enough, it's the of, of the Xbox 360, PS3, and PS2. The PS2 is the only one that can really uh, that can really um, uh, be emulated. The others really really can't. Even the original Xbox really can't be emulated all that well. I mean, it's possible there are emulators, but there are no games run perfectly, or very few do anyway. Let's buy this thing. What? Did you just slide down a sewer pipe? 
He was like, let me sell you this thing, and then BAM, baby! From the planet's surface. Relax, kid. It looks like some sort of fireworks display. Probably in your honor. Whoa! That was close! Ah! Pipe down, I can't concentrate. Oh, we've been hit! Uh, an unexpected detour. When we land, I'll see if I can scare up an exhibition for you. We're not gonna live that long! Kid, let's am scream! Eject! Eject! <laughs> Whoa! That was Skid McMarks. Does he know Captain Quark? I doubt it. He's a pro hoverboarder, always going off about how cool he is. Looks like he's in trouble. <laughs> I'll say. I've never seen him look so freaked out. I feel like this is the kind of game that appeals more to kids. Um, like, you know, the cutscenes and whatever. Like, they're, they're goofy. Like, it's not that, like, no adult could find joy in them. But, I mean, there are some shows... Um, that I think, um, appeal both to kids and adults. Like, Spongebob Squarepants, I think, is a classic example. I actually never watched Spongebob. It wasn't really my thing. But I do know, like, friends who were, like, in their 20s when it was out, who did say it was pretty funny, and who watched it. And it's like, there definitely are some things that appeal to both kids and adults. Uh, this one, I just, I feel like the vibe I'm getting from it is like, it's not like the gameplay wouldn't appeal to adults, but certainly the story and everything is meant to be sort of really silly and to appeal to children. Like, I don't know. It's sort of like how Nintendo always gets that criticism that their games are made for babies. And so like, you know, real gamers like men play Sony and Microsoft consoles. And like, you know, it is true, like, they always make their games sort of very cartoony and very color- like this, you know? Um, and then it, it does sort of give that aura that it is sort of made for children. This sort of has that same aura. So, you know, you know who I think- I mean, you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, but you know who I think would have the most uh, nostalgia for this kind of game is people who played this as a kid. I'm curious to know, uh, which of you who played this game as a kid still love it? And then if anyone out there played this as an adult and like loved it, you know, it's so like if you played this, looks like we can go in there. If you play this as an adult, is it, would this game appeal to you? I feel like eventually we're going to get a way to go in there. Maybe there's a way already and I just wasn't paying enough attention to the cutscenes. Eat a bomb! All this health just lying around, but we don't need it because we're too good at this game. Hey, you. Get back here and die. Also, I have to say that, like, the uh, the sort of fighting mechanics in this game, uh, I feel like are very solid. I'm not usually... So, usually when I play third-person games, I prefer shooters. I think just in terms of gameplay, I enjoy first- and third-person shooters. The mechanics of shooting better than melee combat. Um, oh, that ship just decimated the bridge. But uh, the melee combat in this is, like, nice and basic and, I don't know, like, enjoyable. Like, it's, it's fun. I like the auto-aiming when you throw your items. It's, like, pretty solid. I feel like it's, uh, yeah, I don't know. But, yeah, I don't know about you guys. I just, as a, in terms of gameplay, uh, I just more, I, I just enjoy shooters way more than, like, punchers. And so be that to be like a, oh yeah, the game's definitely slowing down a bit here. Be that, uh, you know, um, brawler games or, or whatever, uh, sort of third person adventure games like this, I just enjoy when they have shooting mechanics more than when they have like beat em up mechanics. Oh, but this is Sasser in slow-mo. Okay, we can look at it as the emulator is slowing down, or we can look at it as the emulator is giving us bullet time, baby. Maybe this is a feature, not a bug. Definitely a bug. I'm going to have to fix it in uh, later videos, but we're so committed into this one that uh, we're just going to go with it. Whoa. You know what it kind of reminds me of is when I was a kid, um... My computer was not very powerful, and I remember specifically playing some games that were, like, at the limit of what my computer could handle. So, like, for instance... Oh, look at this guy. 
Don't hurt me. Oh, what are you? Mercenaries? Torturers? Assassins? I I'll tell you anything. Here, take my infobot. It's all I've got left. Sir, we're not assassins. Hold on. Let's see what he's got. <laughs> Has this ever happened to you? <laughs> Hi, I'm Captain Quark, and believe me, there's nothing worse than stirring down a Blargy and Snaggle Beast from the inside and knowing your equipment isn't functioning properly. That's why I come to Al's Robo Shack for all my electronic needs. Al has been the exclusive repair shop for my super electro gadgets since I was knee high to a sand mouse. If Al can't fix it, it's not broke. I like how he's right, totally Al? blocking Al. You said it, pal! So if you're fighting crime, <laughs> Or just fighting grime. <laughs> Come to Al's RoboShack in Metropolis for all your robotic repairs. Al's RoboShack. It's quarktastic. Okay, that, I take it back. That joke appealed to both kids and adults. Maybe I just have, maybe I'm just a cynical old man. <laughs> There's no magic left in my eyes. Tell them about this invasion. If we had a ship. Uh, what? Uh, a ship? What? You're not going to torture me? Well, as planetary chairman, and I could arrange for you to borrow our courier ship. Cool. You can count on us, sir. Right. Thank you, your chairman shipliness. Now that you have coordinates to two new planets, you can use your ship. Press the select button to bring up the map. Your ship is marked with a star. Ooh. Okay, cool. Um, anyway, what the slowdown reminded me of is as a kid, so my computer wasn't super powerful, and uh, I remember specifically trying to play Virtual Fighter, the very first one on my PC, and it just chugged along, and it was so slow, and like you'd press punch, and it would take a whole second before your guy actually punched, and he would punch in slow-mo. But actually, oddly enough, that helped me learn the game. I got really good very quickly because it's like, the game was just running in slow motion the whole time, so it's like you could counter every move. You know, I was like decimating the computer. And then years later, when I played Virtual Fighter 1 at normal speed, I was like, this game sucks, because it's like I'm used to playing it with like a lot of forgiveness, like super slow-mo. Um, but when it's not in slow-mo, I'm not very good at it. Um, and actually, as I say it, now I'm sort of thinking like, huh, that'd be a cool feature for a game. I don't know if I've ever seen a game do that, where it's like you can hone the difficulty of the game by slowing it down. Um, I don't, I guess maybe people wouldn't want to play a game in slow-mo, but like I imagine playing a game in slow-mo be a huge advantage for certain kinds of games, you know? Um, oh, what is all this over here? Definitely did not see this before. Also, we should buy the, uh, the thingy that that guy was selling. Can dive in this? Is there anything under water? Well, look at that, we can. Push the X button harder to rise more quickly. Ah, uh, you can jump up and down. Wow, that's cool. I mean, this game looks beautiful. I mean, frankly, you know, besides the fact that it's not widescreen, it, the graphics in this don't look objectively better or worse to me than, like, a modern event. You know, like, you could buy a game on Steam that was made this year that might look like this. Just maybe a little sharper. But yeah, I mean, like, the polygon counts and everything looks very reasonable. Um, oh, and we, you actually have to ratchet. Oh, whoa, cool. Okay, we're, I know we, we just got a ship and we're supposed to leave planet, but frankly, we're finding all sorts of cool stuff in here. Speed bombs, yellow robot dudes. Awesome. I'm digging the gameplay of this game, man. You know, like, again, uh, some of the humor I thought seemed a little basic, but then I kind of got turned around that Superhero Guys commercial was actually like, it made me, it did make me smile. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe this game would appeal to adults who never played it when they were kids. Here we go. Oh God, we're gonna run out of air, aren't we? Go, go, go. Go, go, go. Go, oh god. Wow, he cannot hold his breath very long. That was a little tense. I'm guessing like most modern games when you die, you don't have a life count. You just go back to a checkpoint. I think the PS2 and Xbox is when we finally got out of the era of having lives. 
which, you know, in old games has screwed us many times on this channel where I just forget to save the game and we die and we have to go back really far or because there's no automatic checkpoints or like, you know, we die three times and it's like game over. Imagine a game like, like what's a game that really, like imagine a game like Halo had lives, three lives and it's game over. Like people, it would have made it much harder. Like people even still with infinite lives can't necessarily beat that game. I mean, most people can if you sit down, play it enough. But imagine you only hit three lives and that was it. And then you can have a continue and then you have a couple continues and then that's it too, right? Like it would have totally changed the game. Um, wait, is this where we just were? Wait, you could have gone in there the whole time? Or was that closed? I am so confused. Yeah, I think we've more or less explored this whole world. Go ahead and fire thing. Oh, that's so cool. Look, the box explodes into those different sort of menu pieces. That's very cool. Hi there, fuzzball. Ha! Well, screw you too, buddy. All right, we got the pyro, pyro, pyrocitor, pyrocitor. I don't know how you pronounce that. Yeah. Oh my God, that gun is bigger than him. Jesus. Oh my God. Hold on. We like roast a tree. Huh. Seems like a fun weapon. All right. Put it away. We got work to do here. Let's get in our ship. Enter the ship. It's a nice looking ship too. Come here, buddy. My little R2, D2, C3PO companion all rolled into one. Slash, what is the depressed android in Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy? Marvin? He's my Marvin. Okay, so here we are on Novalis. Which is a really cool looking planet, frankly. Iridia or Metropolis. Shoot, where was the th place that we're supposed to go? I actually was not paying attention. Um, hmm. Metropolis sounds like a place where, oh yeah. And then we have a mission. Um, or here. Oh, whoa, you, oh my God. Okay, this game just took on a whole new level of cool. You can go to different planets and do missions. I just assumed it was a linear game like uh, Mario, like Mario 64, where it's like one level after another, after another. Whoa, you actually have control nice. over your missions. Nice. Damn, that is cool. Wow. I gotta say, this game is impressing me. I, I went into it today. Again, I think we have played a Ratchet and Clank before, but I don't remember any of this. So whatever I said about the Ratchet and Clank series in the past, today is a whole, is a fresh new experience. Wow, the fact that you can explore the galaxy, you know, obviously within limits, you have to unlock certain planets and stuff, but the fact that you can even do that, that's freaking amazing. I enjoy the sense of freedom that gives you. We can do uh, levels. In it. It's sort of like uh, it's sort of like the genesis of Mega Man. You know, like Mega Man. I mean, I'm sure other games. Oh my God, this is so slow. I'm sure, other games did this before Mega Man, but uh, but so sort of Mega Man was the iconic one for me. Wow, look at this world. It looks cool. Uh, where you could just select levels in any order you want. So this is sort of like it's semi-linear because you can't just pick any level you want to go to, but you can if you've unlocked a planet. Uh, pick, you know, oh, whatever level you want. Um, ooh, a blaster gun. Yeah, right, well, we got it. We just got a new flamethrower that we got to test out. To quickly center the camera, just die, robots. Oh, that was kind of fun. Quickly center the camera. Oh no, that brought up the thing. No, 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 no. Yeah, I kind of wasn't paying attention to what they said about centering the camera. I'll just do it manually. Yeah, give me those sweet nuts. Oh, that hurt me. Yeah, those explode, but they still have nuts in them. My guy is crazy about nuts and bolts. 
motion bullet time combat. Get back here, you limey bastard. Oh, nice try. Oh! Not on my watch, buddy. Alright, who else wants some? Oh, you dick! You dick! I've always found it interesting how, like, like the PS2 is like 20 year old technology, right? Like, it's like 2002. But in order to emulate it, like, I have a computer 20 years in the future. And it's like a. I wouldn't say it's like the beefiest computer ever. It's probably not what most people would consider a gaming rig, but it's like, it's not nothing. It's like fairly beefy. Um, still has slowdown issues. It's so, sort of like trying to emulate 20 year old technology is still difficult. Um,. I mean, even these days, like, an NES emulator, depending on what you're running it on, you can have slowdown issues, which is crazy. But, I mean, like, n not on a typical computer. On most computers, they can handle the NES pretty well. But uh, if you're playing on, like, uh, a Raspberry Pi or something... In fact, I think a Raspberry Pi can handle an NES, but... I don't know, some kind of, like, really cheap microcomputer. You can occasionally have slowdown. I guess NES is probably not likely, but... Uh, in fact, even Super Nintendo, it's probably like the PS1 era is where you start to get slow down. Get out of here, buddy. I don't need my weapons because I have bullet time. Just automatically activates whenever there's a lot of enemies around. Ratchet, See, like, okay, hold on. Robot. Remember, he knows Captain Quark. Hey, you're that robot guy, right? No, actually, I build robots. I myself am not a robot guy, per se. <laughs> <laughs> Nerd. I like him. So, now that we've cleared that up, what can I do for you? Well, we saw your Infobot announcement. You were with Captain Quark. We're trying to find Captain Quark. We thought you could help us. Your logic is commendable. However, I haven't seen Captain Quark since we shot that commercial. Say, do you run on standard XP-18 sister boards? Version 7.66. Back at ya. I may be able to help you out after all. How does a helipack upgrade sound? Upgrade? Natch. Since he's a 766, I could have the little guy up and flying in no time. Of course, uh, I'll just need my fee for service. I like how the little robot's hesitant about it. Don't modify me. Okay, this won't hurt a bit. Hey, wait. <laughs> no, poor little guy. Am I cool now? <laughs> yeah, you the man, Clank. You're welcome. Huh. I have to say the cutscenes are growing. I know I complained about them like literally like 10 minutes ago. But they are starting to grow on me, so I don't know. I'm getting sucked into the fandom of Ratchet and Clank apparently. The R1? Jump? Oh. Huh. Interesting. Kind of an odd mechanic while you're running while you're running crouch using the r1 button and then jump. oh interesting huh okay the controls seem reasonable oh god slow mo yeah so i was just saying like that'd be another cool interesting mechanic for a game where like the game does slow mo sort of like bullet time but it does so um, when a lot of enemies appear. Oh my god. Oh, we screwed up! <laughs> oh, good. Thank god there are checkpoints. Um, like, imagine you're playing a game, and like when like one or two enemies are around, nothing really happens, but when four, five, six start to like corral you, it's like all of a sudden your character automatically slows time. That would be kind of a cool game mechanic. I mean, I guess sort of Max Payne did it with, uh, they had, uh, you know, bullet time. But there it was totally in your control. It'd be kind of cool if it was like a reflex, or like a spider sense that your character had, where, you know, just when he was in danger, it's like time slowed down for him. I don't know. Another mechanic I've never seen. Um, you know, I've often wondered if bullet time came from video game slowdown. Because, like, as a kid, even back in Mario 2 on the NES, 
I remember. There's a specific part uh, on World 7. So it's like the cloud level. You're climbing up in the clouds trying to get to Warp's Castle. There's a specific part where you have to get a key from uh, one of those... Uh, oh my god. You have to get a key from uh, one of those, like, Fanto guys. Um, and there's also, like, a, um, a pot that spawns Shy Guys. And if you kind of hang around outside the hut where the Fanto guy is, and you just let the Shy Guys spawn, like, too many spawn at once, and the game gets slow. And I know in, in other NES games, I've seen video games slow down stuff, too. And... You know, just like we're experiencing here, I mean, this is very retro for us to be experiencing slowdown on a PS2 game. It's very reminiscent of what would happen in the old NES games and stuff. But, like, I wonder... Part of me wonders if bullet time in The Matrix was partially, maybe even just a smidge, the genesis of it came from gaming slowdown. Like, is that... Do you think there's any... any anything to that, maybe? I mean, I know the, the Wachowskis were big, like, uh, fans of, like, Hong Kong action movies and stuff, and so there's probably was, like, slowdown techniques in those movies that they sort of, uh, you know, uh, developed in order to create the idea of bullet time. But even those Hong Kong things, I mean, it's not like people in Hong Kong never played an NES game. I wonder if slowdown in video games somehow could have contributed to bullet time. I don't know. I don't know. Probably not. But we can always dream, can't we? Back here, buddy. Back here and get destroyed. I wonder if Clank feels bad that I'm destroying all these robots. Sort of like, uh, you know. It's probably the equivalent in the Ratchet and Clank universe of like a hate crime. Like, you know, my guy's very anti-robot. He's, uh, not a racist, but a robotist. A speciesist. As long as they look like robots or have red skin, I'm happy to pummel them to death. I guess they are also attacking me, but I'm also a very prejudiced little, uh, space rabbit, whatever the hell I am. What is Ratchet? It's probably some alien, like a Mugano or something. Mugit a Mugitsu. Sounds like an I'm gonna get you. Whoa, I just knocked that guy off, uh, the building. It's a hardcore death. I think being thrown off a building to your death would suck, because it's like... Imagine you're falling for like 30 seconds. You just have 30 seconds to realize you're boned and that you're about to die. And there's like nothing you can do, right? Like, would you even scream? Like, let's say you're falling to your death for 30 seconds. Would you even scream for the whole time? Probably there'd be that initial scream of like, oh my God, no, oh, fuck me. And then it's like, at a certain point, you're just continually falling. It's like that scene in Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey where they're like, man, this is a really long, large hole. <laughs> like, just continually falling and falling and falling. Sweet power-ups. Oh, God, I hurt myself. Got too uh, excited about all the power. Oh, man. The collectibles in video games just, like, they... they tickle your brain in just the right spot like i walked into a room destroyed a bunch of boxes and got a bunch of collectibles there's something about destruction and getting power-ups that feels really good it's like i feel like modern games have really honed in on that in mario's day all he did was like grab a single coin now we're grabbing bits that are flying all over the place and they're getting sucked into your body and you know you're going to use these to buy better weapons later super satisfying Ooh, this is a train it's kind of cool. Uh, I can't get over, like, the environments. Like, they just look so well done. Especially for a game that is, like, this old. And, you know. Again, PS2 graphics, they're not necessarily bad. But certainly, like, you look at PS3 or PS4 or PS5 even. I mean, Jesus, we're three systems ahead of this. But it's like, I honestly could see a PS5 game, you know looking like this like there are certainly photorealistic ps5 ps5 games that look way better than this right but if you were to make like a cartoony ps5 game like another ratchet and clank this feels about right you know like i don't know i mean i don't own a ps5 so maybe i uh could change my attitude oh god if i actually played one but this feels like pretty solid 
All right, little robot, join me. Hey, where'd he go? Where did he go? Gotta find that little robot bastard. Oh, that was so satisfying. And now look at this. Glum, 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 glum. I feel like I'm eating when I pick up all those things. I don't know about you guys, but it, I don't know. Just uh, something primitive in my brain is going off. That happens. I guess like dropping bombs. Like, what are these things on the ground? Die! Oh, you little... Oh, yeah, look, he does... He, like, drops mines or something. Die. Give me your nuts. <laughs> Don't take that the wrong way, but I want your nuts. Not in the sexual way, in the way that I want to kill you for them. Sorry, I saw three boxes on this train. I go back for them. Made all my testicle jokes. Oh, here's that little robot bastard. Can't run for me, little guy. Greetings, Executive German Drek. Dispense with the pleasantries, Lieutenant. My sources tell me you're behind schedule. You must prepare this planet to be harvested for our new world. Yes, sir. As you can see, everything is moving along. <laughs> I'm counting on you, Lieutenant. And as your former commander can tell you, I don't take disappointment well. Yes, sir. I won't fail. That was pretty funny. Destroying yet another planet. Yeah, but if that's the kind of help he's getting, I don't think we have anything to worry about. You should not underestimate Chairman Drek. He is quite dangerous. We must find Captain Quark. Look, that lieutenant doesn't seem so tough. Let's take him out ourselves. Perhaps we can persuade the lieutenant to tell us where Drek is. <laughs> Now you're talking. Mm, all right. You get to ride this in slow-mo? Or I guess not. I guess it gets slow when we look out at the, uh, the majestic views here. Oh, look, there's like a little uh, taxi boat. The big L. Oh, oh, wow. I really like how this game is set up, yo. Oh. Is that the dude over there? Hold on a sec. Hi there, fuzzball. <laughs> I just love that greeting. It's so basic. Great. The blaster gun. So, ooh, that's pretty cool. I'm gonna use this a little bit. Oh, it's uh, it's not actually this guy. Welcome to the Captain Quark Fitness Course. If you're strong enough, fast enough, and clever enough to beat my fitness challenge, you will receive a reward from my head trainer. Simply make your way to the third island to complete the course. Good luck. Quark Enterprises is not responsible for sprains, broken bones, snapped tendons, bruised egos, or accidental death incurred while taking the challenge. That kind of reminds me of the tick. Me, Captain, but we have more pressing issues. We urgently need your assistance. Clank? Yes? Do you notice anything unusual about Captain Quark? Well, I find the fact that he has a spring where his leg should be to be quite puzzling. And why do you think that is? Possibly an injury incurred while battling evil? This isn't the real Captain Quark, you numbskull. It's a robot. Oh. Wah wah. I, you know what? So here's the thing. I feel that joke that he thinks that's the real Captain Quark would be kind of funny. And what Captain Quark said was kind of funny. But the sort of dialogue uh, between Ratchet and Clank there borderlined on explaining a joke. And when you explain it a joke, as the Joker says in Batman the Animated Series, if you have to explain a joke, there is no joke. I feel like they kind of killed that joke for me and turned it into a, a child's joke because they explained it. So for me, I, I did like the idea that this little robot thinks that's the real Captain Cork. I did like uh, the, the jokes that Captain Cork said, but you know, then they kind of killed it for me. So I think they were killing it for me a little bit too much earlier on. That's why I was like, I think the jokes here are a little basic and maybe this game you enjoy it more if you knew it from when you were a kid. But um, they have had some good, some good jokey moments since then so it's like i i do think the humor in here is stronger than it first appears 
but it's almost like they just need a little script doctor to come in here and tighten a few things up maybe maybe that's what i'm thinking but um okay i do not know how to get up maybe we can't get up this thing yet it's like we can't jump high enough well we might have to come back i mean the fact that you can explore different planets at different times um, means that we might need an item from a later planet before we can uh, do that fitness course. I say, I mean, we are kind of pushing an hour here. I think we're going to wrap this up very soon, especially because I've gotten a good feel for the flavor of this game um, in the, the gameplay that we've played so far. But i got to break these boxes, sorry. But I do want to try out this new blaster gun that we got. So let's go back to our ship. Go back to that. Let's see a third... Or I guess fourth planet um, together and we'll try out the blaster gun and I can uh, wrap up my thoughts on the game. All right, where are we going to go? Oh, there's actually two new places. So this one is like a dark jail. This one is a nice looking planet. Check out the jail real quick. Here, how about this? We go we go spend a few minutes on the jail and then we'll end on the other planet. Because we got two more planets unlocked. We might as well see them. It's kind of fun to go to a new planet and see like what are you gonna see? And it's not like the planets are like sprawling metropolises, like a Grand Theft Auto City for you to explore. They're pretty basic, they're pretty small little regions to explore. But it is still cool that they have these different environments. And again, that you can go to them in any order that you want. I really like that. I like when games give you freedom. Not too much freedom, because <laughs> I find games like Grand Theft Auto imposing, because it's like, where do you even begin? But some freedom is, is good. Some freedom is good. All right, so we're in a jail world. Oh my god. The slow-mo is real, guys. Die, 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 die. Oh, it's a, it's a machine gun. I've been shooting it just like a pistol. Hold on. This is pretty cool. Die. Oh, look at these little Velociraptor thingies. Guess we don't need to use the gun on them. Pretty cool. All right, let, let's gun down some robots. Die, robot. Die, robot. Oh, that gun is so satisfying. It just sucks that we have so little ammo. Like, we're literally almost out of bullets for it. Oh god, oh, I like these little orange uh, velociraptors too. They look really cool. Oh god! I saw that happening. See, when you're playing a game in slow motion, you see your mistakes happen in, <laughs> in, in slow mo. You're like, oh, I shouldn't have pressed that button. Here comes the penalty. Alright, so this is a sort of. Uh, Prison world, it seems. Oh, here's the entrance. Oh, look at this. Very cool. You know what? They are giving you like a fair amount of ammo, so it's like, go, oh, God. To traverse this area. Our records. Oh. This swing shot is not available on this planet. I like that. Okay, we need an item to get past that, but rather than just leaving you confused, like how the hell do I jump up there? They tell you that, hey, yo, you need an item, you don't have it right now, come back later. Uh, some people might consider that holding your hand a bit too much, but I I appreciate that. Because otherwise I probably would have jumped around there and tried to figure it out. Like, <laughs> the retro game uh, way of telling you that you don't have an item is not to say anything and just leave you to be utterly confused. Like, think of like the original Legend of Zelda and like, old games like that. It's like, if you didn't have an item to get past a part, nobody told you. You were just left to be confused. Which, there is a certain amount of fun in totally exploring things yourself, and then later on realizing, like, oh, when you get the swinging thing, this could help me get past that part I was stuck on. So it's like, there is some joy. It's sort of like solving a puzzle by yourself versus getting a hint. Um, but I do also like that they gave me hints, so I kind of like it both ways. I like... Solving things for myself and getting hints. So, I'm a, I'm a walking contradiction, guys. You you can never please me. If you make a video game, no matter how good it is, I will find a reason to tell yes, you why right. what you've done is incorrect. Just about do it. <laughs> Commander, we are finished with this world. 
Commence towing our planet to its next destination. Lieutenant! Yes, sir. You have fulfilled your tree quota. Barely. We are ready to return to base. Not so fast, Lieutenant. Just because we don't need any more trees doesn't mean they should have them. Destroy everything. Oh, that's mean. Can't believe they actually were able to harvest part of the planet. And I can't believe the planet they're building is like actually coming along. Kind of kind of an interesting plot. I mean, it, it's totally nonsensical, but it is interesting. I've never seen a bad guy trying to build a planet out of other planets. The closest thing I can think of is Titan AE, where the whole idea is the Titan was able to build a planet. And that in itself is kind of a cool achievement that you don't often see in sci-fi, building a planet. But to build a planet out of other planets, that's just like a, a different level of silliness. Oh yeah, here's here's the here's the NES slowdown that we we remember. Take me back to uh, the summer of '89 when they would program NES games so intense the system couldn't even handle it. I don't know why they made them as intense as they did. Why didn't they just take a few enemies off the screen? I don't know. They didn't want to back off. They were like, this game needs seven enemies on this screen. Six will not cut it. Must be seven. And then, like, the NES would do the thing where if there's too many bad guys on the screen or too many items, it couldn't even draw them all, so they'd start flickering. The NES flicker and the slowdown were, like, intricately linked to each other. Um. Oh, man. Again, I, I don't hate the slowdown in this, but I am going to definitely, you know, if we do more... PS2 emulator gameplay, I'm going to try and fix it. Which, usually, you might think you have to turn down emulator settings or something, but sometimes it's just tweaking a setting, like, uh, so it's like the game doesn't look any worse, you're not, you know, turning off textures or something like that, um, but you're just adjusting a setting so that it uh, actually runs a bit better. Um, okay, I'm confused as to what we need to do here. Oh, we should check out which item is for sale over here. Gadgetron. The Glove of Doom, 7,500. Too bad we can't afford that. Well. Well, Ratchet and Clank here. One of the games in the book, A Thousand One Video Games You Must Play Before You Die. And I came into this game honestly thinking like, yeah, well, I've, I've played Ratchet and Clank. I've played, I think anyway, I've played... Jack and Daxter, possibly. I, I've played the games like this. Um, I was like, yeah, it'll be a third-person action game. You just kind of run around and break stuff and fight enemies. It'll be fine. To be honest, I enjoyed this game more than I thought I would. Um, there's... The game... First of all, the game is a solid third-person action platformer. It does have cool weapons... Um, I like the fact that on every planet you can buy a new weapon, and every weapon I'm, like, interested to see what it will be. Um, the plot is silly, but silly in a fun way. Um, oh, here we go. Um, the humor is sometimes better than you would think. Um, uh, I won't say always, because there have been a few eye-rolling moments, or moments where I'm like, okay, come on, like, this seems a little childish. But, I mean, you know, the game was designed, obviously, you can tell from the aesthetics, to make sure it appealed to, to children. But I don't think it would appeal only to children. I think there's certainly um, a good amount of gameplay and even, you know, humor that even adults can appreciate in here. So, all in all, I have to say, I think this is a great game. I think this is a great game. Had I owned this for PS2 back in the day, or if this had been out on Xbox and I had it there, or anything like that... Um, I almost certainly would have played it. Um, I, it seems like a, a good, solid, uh, you know, third-person platformer. But I would love to hear from you guys, especially if you guys actually did play this back in the day when you were kids, or maybe you weren't a kid when it came out, you were an adult and you played it as an adult. Um, I would love to hear your thoughts, your memories, your opinions. You know, did I get it right? Did I get it wrong? Is this game awesome? Does it suck? Let me know in the comments down below. As always, I hope that whatever you think about this game, um, you're able to have a bit of fun with me here today. And if you did, my mission is complete. And you can like the video, subscribe, all that stuff. I don't know. Is there any... <laughs> you know, I say, I say like the video, subscribe, almost out of habit at this point, because I know you're supposed to say it for YouTube. Is there any point even doing that anymore? Everybody knows. 
if you're watching YouTube and you don't know about liking videos and subscribing, I don't know what to say to you. Like, you've been living under a rock. Maybe I'll stop saying it. I don't know. Maybe I won't. Who knows? Um, I'm nothing if not contradictory, as we've learned here today. So, who knows? I guess it'll just depend on what mood I'm in in the future. But anyway, yeah. I hope you guys did enjoy yourselves. I hope today was fun for you. And, uh, yeah. This is our first emulated game on the PS2. Should we do more? Should we abandon emulators? Let me know in the comments of that, too. Anyway, guys. Um, yeah. You all take care of yourselves. We'll catch you in the next one. Till then, my friends. Peace.